I want to do a podcast about films. I don't think anyone will listen, mate. Ah, oh, fuck it, should we do it anyway? Ah, yeah, go on then. Okay. Hello and welcome to Movie the Needle. My name's Simon and I'm joined by my good friend Carl and we are mixing things up again this week and be haphazardly dissecting a movie that we believe is overrated by critics and audiences alike. We'll see whether we can movie the needle of opinion. So this week we are discussing a 1939 fairy tale musical starring Judy Garland about a girl and her dog swept away from their Kansas farm to the magical land of Oz and embark on a quest with three new friends to see the wizard. Shoe theft and juvenile manslaughter ensue. It's the Wizard of Oz! You said 1939. Is it not? Yeah. There is one in 1939. What? But there's also one in 1925. That's not the one we've done. It's not the one you've done. (laughs) Have you done that one? No. Oh, that would be (laughs) fucking bad, wouldn't it? Jeez. I mean, there are quite a lot of versions of this. Yeah. uh, Animated, quite a lot of animated ones as well. But no, well, that's good. Good, 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 good. Hey, I was uh, listening to a, another podcast the other day. You whore. I know, I know. And it was a movie one as well. You I treacherous a, whore. I had a little chuckled myself because... Oh, just to yourself. Okay. They said, right, at the start of the podcast, without further ado, let's get to the film. And I thought to myself, <laughs> if we ever rebrand, we could be called With Further Ado. With Further Ado, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Bags how, of so how long did they spend the uh, before they actually started talking about the fucking film? I've, I've no idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a, a do all over the shop here. Um, or unrelated, but the same sentiment. Uh, we could go with uh, amateur hours, which is just, I just thought of that as well. Yeah, I like it. Am- amateur yeah. hour, obviously, we have hours. hours. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, no, but also good. amateur. You know, yeah, so. it's, good. it's good. We don't need to rebrand, but if we ever did, yeah. we've not got that in the yet. back pocket. No. Well, if any fuckers keep using our theme music, then maybe we'll have to. Oh yeah, have that to was weird, that wasn't it? Yeah, just should, should probably um, put some context. To oh yeah, yeah. So know. Carl stumbled across, or did were you alerted? Yeah, it was on to? TikTok. It was. An, it you literally just stumbled across it. Yeah. It was like an advert for contact lenses or something, right? So I didn't actually watch. watch yeah, some it. sort of like laser eye surgery. Piece. Oh, that was it, laser eye surgery. Yeah. yeah, they just had our little movie the needle uh, theme tune in the background. I was like, how's how's this? Our feeds have got crossed here. Yeah, it's, it's cocked. <laughs> yeah. And then I realised, oh no, wait, that music's just like. Did you find yourself for reaching everyone. for a beer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a trigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to today, Carl. Yes, I think it'll be quite a fun one. It's always good doing these little specials. Just yes. mix things up a bit. Um, and we're not going to be fighting each other for for a change. Oh, I don't but think so. I don't want to mix things up too much, so I have still done a game. Oh, yeah, good, good. And it's called Wizard or Oz. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Quite pleased with it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, very good. Uh, it's going to be me relying on you Ooh, uh, not having a good knowledge of some of the movies I think you don't have a good knowledge of. Uh, oh, you should know that by now. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I'm pretty safe, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, I, you talked about another movie podcast. I want to just uh, shout out another podcast that I am uh, an avid listener to. Um, and this is the uh, PHLY Eagles podcast. I'm an American football fan. Eagles, uh, Philadelphia Eagles are my team. Uh, and they have a show. Uh, and one of the, the co-hosts of that, Zach Berman, he is also an author, journalist, uh, and he's got uh, a couple of books out. And the second one has just come out. Unless, you know, I'm going to Philadelphia soon to mm-hmm. see the Eagles. I liked his first book, so I messaged him on old Instagram and just said, hey, uh, I don't suppose when I'm in Philadelphia, we can meet up and you can like sign the book, you can take a picture Ooh. and stuff. And he was just like, yeah, sure, where are you staying? Yeah, we'll, we'll find a find a time and a place. So he's like, oh, so I'm going right, to meet like one it? of my podcast inspirations as well. Because yeah. him right. and his uh, his partner, Bo, uh, are great together. Yeah. Um, brass tax. how many followers have they got? What's uh, the listenership I mean, like? I mean, lot, lot, lots. Yeah. They're, they're pretty pretty big, yeah. Right. Uh, I think particularly in the Philadelphia market. And uh, yeah. I get, well, they do live, uh, you know, like on YouTube, mm. live things. So you can get on the chat and do all of that. Yeah. They have this thing called Super Chat, right? Where you can pay money and oh, they'll definitely yeah. read out your thing. I was yeah. like, that's the dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get, yeah. Get there. But we'd also guarantee for a small fee, we could get uh, get mentions out there and stuff. And they do occasionally talk about You films. don't need to do that. You're going to meet him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, he does that for a lot of people. He's a good, he's a good, he's a good chap. Yeah. Well, no, you've got a you, hard sell, hard sell. Yeah, I'll give him yeah. a card. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he is not a big movie fan, but his uh, his partner, 
yeah. the podcast host yeah. is. So I'll get him to pass them on or hand him around the office. Or... Wax lyrical about the Eagles. Wax lyrical about him. If he wants you to touch it, fine. <laughs> it. And then, oh, That's by my the way, limit. I do a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Very good. But yeah, it's like good stuff. Um, oh, I haven't done anything as exciting as that since we last spoke. I did the school pick up today. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is it, was, this is rare for you, that right? That was you, out of my comfort zone, to be honest. You do the yeah. drop off, right? Yeah. I do the drop off, which not... is very much drop and go, as mm. we've talked about, in and out. Thing Pick is, up a bit more waiting around. Yeah, and I, 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 I was all. That, I just I, I can't get the journey time. So I was I was there <laughs> five minutes early. Oh, you don't want that? Did you have yeah. to talk to someone? <laughs> well, it was awful. Uh, so I, I got there bang on twenty five past. Mm-hmm. Um, Realised, oh no, it doesn't kick out till half past. Longest fifteen minutes of my life. That's... No, what? because as if it kicks out on time. Oh, right? right, okay. And as if they send the children out in an orderly fashion, right? And as I... if, even when they've sent for one of mine, she fucking comes out yep. on time. So, awful. Absolutely awful. I'm not doing it again, I'll just leave them there. <laughs> yeah. They'll send them home eventually, they don't want to keep them. Yeah. They'll just drop them off. Yeah. Actually, that's a great idea. Eventually, they'll just drop them off. The teacher will go, fuck it, fine. I'll drop yes. them off at home. Yeah, like, I great. know where they live. So yeah. yeah, so you get an extra hour of... Uh, they might start fining you. They do like a fine. Well, uh, yeah, they do, don't they? Mm. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, preferable to uh, to the drop-off experience, a uh, pick-up experience, sorry. Mm. So. Well, there we go. Yeah. Hard times for Carl. No, I did not like it. You have literally inhaled that beer, man. All right, listen. Be easy for you days at work. <laughs> just looked over. We I texted like you earlier and said, in. about half seven tonight, and you just radio silence out. I've just been sat here, like, gasping, like, scratching <laughs> the table, going, well, there's, there's, there's beers in that fridge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Any movies you watched this week? Mm. Yeah. Condor Man. Oh, yeah. Well, you mentioned that the other day, right? Mentioned when, when you were talking we about were Eiffel t- Tower yeah, filming yeah, yeah, locations. Yeah. The greatest movie to be filmed off the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> uh, watch it with your boy. Yes. I do recommend it. Um, I mean, I loved it as a kid, and I remembered why when I watched it, because there is some unironically cool James Bond-style gadgetry, mm. like cars and stuff. And guns Is it a and comedy? Uh, it's a bit like Johnny English. You think that's so sort of... So, no. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit like a, a sort of 80s Johnny English. Um, I lo- loved it as a kid. I, I think uh, I think you, I think your lad might enjoy it. Um, Add it to the list. Yeah, it was, it's fun. Um yeah, I, I said uh, Frank Spencer, Michael, Michael, what's his name? Is um, it not? No, it is him. Oh, okay. But I, it, the, the what's his name uh, bit I left off last time. And who is it? I forgot. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I'm, glad we, I'm, glad we, I'm glad we looped back round to that, Carl. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd Let, remember, tune in next I remember week. that. <laughs> tune in next week to finally find out what the fuck he's called. Yeah, no, I'll look it up, right? So, uh, All right, uh, Michael fine. Crawford. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh, I remember that this time. Nope, forgot it again. <laughs> yeah, Michael Crawford. Um, well, which is, which is a, such a... I mean, I don't know enough about his filmography, but I only know him from Frank Spencer. Mm. Right. So it's such a weird casting choice because in this he's playing an American yeah um, but yeah it kind of works he's, he's pretty good in it yeah. well, I, so, will, yeah. I, will, I will give it a watch uh, at some point I will get around to not watching Bond films which I've been doing and uh, have watched three of the bastards oh yeah go on um, th- three pretty uh, well more ones that I was familiar with and could remember the first time around watching as well mm. uh, so Goldeneye oh I mean memories of that it's good you know, it's a, it's a really a really good adaptation of the video game. I want to say, um, <laughs> really good. Um, and then the world what is what a not game, like, by the way. Uh, what a game! I mean, yeah. I, I, that you can usually at some cinemas, you can hook up an N sixty four and get mm. Golden Eye on the big screen. Yeah, four player. They re released um, like a remastered version of it for oh. Xbox. You could you could download Ooh. it. And a few people were going, "Oh my god, this is aged terribly." It's like the thing no. is, this is the this is the era of the online gamer sat in your bedroom, yeah. playing with yourself. That's not that's not the joy. Yeah, that's not the joy of GoldenEye. It no. was the, the four people around four the telly. Pa- yeah, around the telly, small telly. And <laughs> it's like, yeah, the game's dated, but it's that wonderful sweet spot of it is simple enough to just pick up, play, master, put down, and yeah, yeah love being really odd, good. love being odd job. <laughs> ah, hit. you cheating Hard bastard. To hit. It's too small. <laughs> uh, so then the world is not enough. Yeah, I, I'm the first um, Bond film I went to the cinema to see. The world is not enough. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, and uh, we'll talk about more about the, the, the Bond films, but 
the, the thing that stood out for me was I remember Robert Carlyle being a lot more menacing than he actually is in that film, where mm. he actually just comes across as someone who's got a bit of a cold. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly annoyed. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then Casino Royale, watched last night. So I watched two Bond films this week. Oh. I watched Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace. Oh, so you're getting ahead of the game. Mm. Nice. So, I, I, Quantum of Solace is going to be tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and then we shall be recording, finally. We've been talking about Bond films for long enough. We will be recording an episode about, and it will be a, a pretty long one, probably spread over two episodes. Yes. Um, Chance, so, yeah. As you know, I'm a Bond fanboy. As, as everyone um. knows now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I watched another film. Uh 88 minutes, I've got a funny story about this. Right, that's what it's called, or that's how long it is? That's what it's called. Okay. Uh, now, there's another story on that, how which long is less it? funny, because I was looking for a film that was less than an hour and a half. So I Google films, less than an hour and a half, 88 minutes, pops up, thought, great. No, that's just a fucking title, isn't it? You still watched it, though? Oh, yeah. Well, I was committed to it, by the way. Mm-hmm. I've not heard um, of it. No, it's a, it's a thriller, sort of like a mystery-type thing, starring Al Pacino. Oh. Someone's trying to kill him, he's got 88 minutes to kill him, and that's okay. a bit of a... 88, a who done it type thing, yeah, you know, yeah, red yeah. herrings, left, right, center. Yeah, so I watched this with a friend. He knows who he is. You um, don't. But this friend I've mentioned on the pod before. Yeah. Because I've questioned the um, veracity of his opinions when it comes to films. Is now, this he, the one that's always got a phone out? No, nah, he, he does that sometimes, yeah. But but the, the, the thing I've mentioned before in the pod is namely keeps falling asleep. Right. Okay. And then he'll, he'll, he'll you know, sleep for... Oh, the pivotal moments or large way to the film and wake up and go, eh, it's all right. So you don't know. <laughs> um, so anyway, this one, like I said, bit of a thriller sort of mystery. Someone's trying to kill him. We get through the first act. My friend nips to the toilet. All right. Turns out the poor guy has been struck down by a bout of food poisoning. Oh. We know this because by the time he reappears in the living room, pint of water in hand, a decent chunk of the pivotal second act has already unfolded. We also know it because um, uh, he told me he might not make it through the movie on account of shitting himself inside out uh, and may have to go home, but for now he's going to soldier on. Cool. Um, and then, do you know, thinking about shitting yourself, we've had a lot of that on this podcast, haven't we? We've like, had a lot of shitting ourselves on the podcast. You, oh, right, you mean talking about... Canyon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your brother in the cinema, there was me with my month old <laughs> bacon sandwich. <laughs> now this. There we go. Yeah. Um, if you've ever shit yourself, we get can... in touch at hello at mtnpod.com. Yeah. We could get sponsored by, uh, <laughs> what is it? Not a modium. What would it be? Is it a modium? Uh, yeah, it is a modium. Yeah. Stop shitting yourself, that one, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so anyway, he's really struggling and he spends a decent chunk of the rest of the film asleep on my sofa, sweating, and I imagine trying not to soil himself. Like he was really not in a good place. <laughs> he manages to wake up for the closing scene and then just proclaims, with all the confidence in the world, Ah, doesn't look like I miss much. So I'm, I'm looking forward to another lukewarm review coming, uh, coming in. Um, he would be correct, uh, but he doesn't know. He's, he, do, he doesn't know. So That's yeah, funny. there we go. Oh, tell you what, on review sites. Yeah. Re- have you read reviews for this? Um, some. I didn't go too deep into it because who, who can be bothered? Well, I could apparently. Um, and I have got. Something I think, um, I mean, we'd need a bit of a listenership to get this idea off the ground. So, right. you know, we'll maybe revisit it. But I think we should start a movement because I think review should... Not, review not bowel sites, movement, just to be clear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think review sites should start forcing people to justify extreme reviews. As in, if you're going one or five. Yeah, exactly that. If you go one or five, letterbox, little pop-up. 200, words, there, 200, 200 words minimum. Yeah, exactly. Should get, and that should be easy, right? Because you've gone one or you've gone five. Yeah. You should be able to say, oh, well, it was terrible because they're... Because... I like it. Uh, I was trying to find... I was, like, trying to read good reviews for this. So I put up the five-star ones mm. to see sort of... Well, what, just like, a lot of one line, I'm missing. One, one liner things. They're all just... Yeah. Oh, classic. Yeah, exactly that. So it took me five pages of scrolling through the reviews before I got to anyone actually telling me why they liked the film. The rest of them were just... Oh, it's a classic. Well, we'll get on to that, Carl. Uh, yeah. That's going to be exhibit A for the uh, prosecution, I think. Yeah. Well, my, f- my most infuriating one, one guy said, five stars, this is, uh, his review was, I mean, there's not much to say. Well, okay, you give, you give, give it a whirl, <laughs> if, you, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> let's, let's have a go. Uh, and then he goes on. This is the, the, the other half of the review. It's the most iconic of all time, for a reason. Iconic? Uh, sorry. 
iconic. There we go. It's the most iconic of all time for a reason. Right. I just want to dig into that. What's the reason? The most iconic, by the way. Mm. Not one of. The, the most. most. Yep. And then not of a period. Of all time. Mm. And yeah, what's the fucking reason then? Yeah. Because you're still... So, yeah, still none the wiser as to what the fucking reason is. Uh, one Star Reviews fare better, by the way. It d- you did not have to go very far to find justifications uh, for that. Although most of them were citing sort of a myth about the production, which, you know, misguided. Myths. But, oh, yeah. But at least, at least like, they've got a reason. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, misguided. I, I do, uh, I, I kind of dislike that, though, where people are reviewing the movie based yeah. on, like, something that you can't tell from watching the movie what what you're talking about there yeah yeah but at least at least they've got a reason i mean oh, they I kicked mean, they kicked the dog one star there, there were some on the on the first page to did appraise the characters in the production as as reasons why they don't like it and that's that's all i wish even if i disagree just fucking tell me why I just want to say, Carl, that's dangerously talking about the film in the first uh, section here. We've, uh, we've. Oh, I should have saved for that. Shouldn't drastically yeah. gone off piece here from the formula. Um, there was one other film that I watched, and it was one that you watched last week. Mm. Wolves. Wolves. Oh yeah. How did you find uh, it? Uh, yes, yeah, fine. Yeah, that's about it was right. Fine. Yeah, fine. It was fine. Yeah. Did you watch it with a wife? I did. She liked it. She. Um, did she fall asleep in that one? Hmm. Yeah, she fell asleep. She had to. Yeah. We watched it over two nights because we started also quite understandable. Started Definitely. quite late, but she fell asleep. She had to watch a lot more the second day. Uh, you watched it over two nights to catch up. What a ridiculous practice watching it a ch- film over it, spreading it over multiple viewings over a long period. I know. Of time. Yeah. Have you finished Black Dahlia now? Fuck you know. Yes. <laughs> I did. I did, did you rewatch watch it all? I started from the beginning. I watched it. Well worth it though, wasn't it? You gave it like what five stars. What a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> One star. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I, I hit my two hundred word fucking quota as well. Don't you worry about that. Uh, I did. I did have a little giggle when I saw that come up on your letterbox. So honestly, like, oh, well, well worth the wait. Honestly, I was gutted because <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd had a couple of false starts, and it's like, oh, I'm not sure about this. But it's like, well, that's not that's not the film's fault. You can't just pick it up and fall asleep after you know whatever. <laughs> it turns out it is the film's fault. <laughs> yeah, one oh, star, okay. gutted me. Um, any other chit chat or apologies that we want to get to before we no. get to the, the main business of I think that's all my ado okay in which case Carl it's time to unveil the ale we need to get some horns on that or something don't we <laughs> yeah perfect we'll, we'll chop that up and use that every week yeah right but I'm pretty sure I've done that most weeks to be fair <laughs> there's a right way to do this the right way is to introduce the beer and then pause we, yeah. dis- we discussed this. Yeah. So, because I don't want to be faffing about it in the yeah, future, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through. You, I think you've had this one before. Okay. Um, the it's actually some of these have nicked the brewery names, but don't worry, it will become clear. Okay. Directors Ale, made by Courage. Okay. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. See what you're doing there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You had a Brains Brewery, Welsh Brewery. Yes, yes. Brains. Yeah. 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 And Go then on. What, what else we got? Uh, it'll be heart. So it'll be the, the vocation. Vocation. Yeah. Heart yeah. and soul. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Couldn't, couldn't get any of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you've gone for a beer by Two Tribes Brewery. Two Tribes. Okay. It's called Dream Pale Ale. Dream, because it was. It was all, all a dream. All a dream. Yes. Oh well, I mean, there were there were three good ideas. Well done. Yeah. Um. um but yeah, I mean, it's difficult to get the. I mean, I say I couldn't get any of them. You didn't try very hard. Well, I do well. The problem is, is Amazon Prime would have been my only source of courage, and I was not about to drop thirty-eight quid on eight bottles of Ooh. courage. Ooh. Um, and then I had another route to maybe get brains, but yeah, five or a so, pop. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, so there we go. Dream oh. Pale Ale. Uh, two tribes. Never heard of them. Two tribes. I've had. Yeah, I've had some of these. Yeah, yeah. recently. I got some for. Um, I want to say birthday. Uh, got a few of them. They are thoroughly uh, okay. Based and I, I couldn't let the um, the courage, heart, and uh, and brains uh, thing just sail by because I'm so proud of the idea. Yeah, it was a great uh, idea. But, but hey, yeah, like a lot of things in this podcast, great idea, poor execution. Absolutely on brand. <laughs> oh, quite nice. All right, so let's get started on the film, which is The Wizard of Oz this week. 
But first, just a reminder of our rating scale, which is a simple five-point scale. You either really like it, you like it, you're ambivalent, you don't like it, or you really don't like it. And it is us versus the critics slash mass population of the world uh, this week. Um, and we're going to find out from the critics what they thought of it. Um, I don't know any critics, so I can't ask them. Mm. But uh, I have looked online. And I'm basing it on a Rotten Tomato score. Uh, 94% from the top 50 or 50 top critics. Don't know which top 50 that is, how they rate them. Who knows? Mm. Um, but basically high. Uh, Metacritic 92%, so we're looking basically at high nines, 9 out of 10, 4 out of 5, 4.5 out of 5, I should say, rating. Um, the public, though, 89% Rotten Tomatoes rating. A bit lower. Mm. But interestingly, Still really high, it gives a little score, 4.3 out of 5. I'm just like, oh, because they do it, it's like this positive reviews, isn't it? That's what yeah. they do. That's why it doesn't add up. Yeah. Um, I answered my own query halfway through the asking the Great stupid question. Audio content. Oh, yeah. Uh, 8.1 on IMDb and 4.0 on Letterboxd, mm. which I thought it might have been higher, actually, to be yeah. fair. So, uh, yeah. Spoiler alert. Both our ratings are going to be much lower than that. <laughs> Fucking damn right they are. Yeah. Um, all right. Where are you sitting on the scale, Carl, there? Uh, I think I'm going to have to go, I really don't like this. Yeah. Yeah. So th- this is this is the scale where I struggle a little bit because... I'm going to talk a lot about film of its time. Good things about it are this. But in terms of like, do I like it? No. No, no I don't. I really don't like it. Yeah. Uh, so I think I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to stick with really don't like it. I'll see if I can talk myself up. Mm. Uh, <laughs> seems mm. unlikely, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, there are, there are some positive things about this, but I'm going to stick with really don't like. Mm. Carl, what don't you like? Backronyms. What the fuck are backronyms? You don't know what a backronym is? No, I do not. Well, you know what an acronym is? Right? Well, do I, Carl? Well, often <laughs> they, are, they are confused with abbreviations, initialism, yes. and all the rest of it. That's one another of my, podcast. One of my earliest memories of you, I think, uh, when I was <laughs> that's, <laughs> taking that's, that wrong and being leapt on. With yeah, like, <laughs> that's, that's another podcast. I think that's an interesting, uh, interesting <laughs> Um Yeah, that's another podcast. No, backronyms are when people take a word and then retrofit uh, uh, a, 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 a meaning uh, for each each word. So, like, mouse is one, like, you know, computer mouse. Yeah. But go, oh, do you know that's, uh, that actually stands for uh, manually operated uh, user selection equipment? So, no, it fucking doesn't. It's called mouse because it looked like a mouse the, when, when the guy invented it. Right. Posh, have you heard that one? No. People say posh is uh, an acronym for um, port out starboard home. Like referring to the best um, sort of cabins on a ship when you come out, and they were the reserve of the rich people, uh, and right. therefore that's where posh comes from. But no, no, it doesn't. Load of shit. Never heard that before. There's my fucking life. loads of them, right? And the zip zip code. Sh- yeah. Sure. I think it's zone improvement plan. No, it's just called zip because it was short, quick, zippy. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, rubbish. Load of rubbish. And uh, the film. Oh yeah, I hated this as a kid. Uh, I think I probably found it a bit scary. I always found it a bit weird. But my one overarching uh, memory of it, it always felt like it dragged like hell. Mm. And I always just remember it like being put on. Because I mean, now they've been subjected to it. My sister's a couple of years younger than me. My brother's five years younger than me. So I've gone through a fair few cycles of being subjected to this shit. Um, <laughs> and I remember it. It getting put on and just being like, oh, okay, yeah. And of course, it's back in the days where you can't just go, oh, well, I don't oh, put something else on. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I think this film, I reckon it's got a lot to answer for in terms of my disdain for musicals as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah, mm. not, not, not a fan at all. Uh, interesting. So I, I'm, I don't mind a musical, uh, generally. A good musical. I need to, need to really be clear about that. Uh, interesting that I don't have a childhood attachment to this movie. I think I did see it for the first time literally earlier this year oh really um like a few months ago just the other day um as such i did found it find it too long similar to your experience as a child dragging on uh repetitive a little irritating basically i think it's a uh, a filmed local pantomime or amateur dramatic production <laughs> um but we'll get into more detail on that Oh, 
Okay. Let's SOS. Get... Right. What? That's another one. Acronym. Yeah. What, what, go on. Well, what do you think it stands for? I don't, I don't know. Oh, you never heard Save Our Souls? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I guess. no shit, mate. No. What because is... it's dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, 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 i.e. the simplest thing you can type out on Morse code. Oh. That's why it's SOS. SOS. Yeah. Cool. Backronym, mate. Rife they are. If this doesn't get us going viral, nothing will. Um, right, moving on to the cast. Uh, oh, cast today. I think it's been cast for the last few weeks, you know. Interesting. Yeah, you've hmm. been on the run of cast. I have, yeah. Um, right, we should probably start with the garland of Judy. Liza Minnelli's mum. Liza Minnelli's mum, yeah, which is weird. <coughs> Friend of the podcast. Watching her as a... <laughs> She'll be dead next. Um, <laughs> which is weird, watching a 16-year-old and going talking about her daughter. Uh, but hey, never mind. Um, Dorothy Gale. Mm. Um you got anything positive to say about any of the cast, by the way? Uh, let's have a look down the list. Um, yes, I have got something positive oh, to say okay, about good, good. Uh, some of the cast. Um, what about what about Judy? No, 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 not here. No, no. Well, the, the thing is, uh, and this is one of those occasions where it might not be her fault, right? Mm. But she's just got constant worried face on. She looks a bit like Gabriel Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> she's just constantly concerned. <laughs> <laughs> you look at Gabriel Jesus now and that, you'll only ever see Dorothy. That is what everyone says, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've not really got a lot uh, lot to say about her. She was 16 at the time. I've no idea what age she's meant to be playing. 11. 11? Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. It's um, a, in the book, um, Dorothy is 11. It's very much supposed to be a child protagonist. Right. Um, and they did... I don't know if they're going for 11 in the film. Yeah. But I they mean, did lean no. into the... Child size of it, they had concerns because she's only like four foot eleven. Mm. But they did have concerns during production, like, does she look childish enough? Is she? Is she? Is she? You know. And I've got to say, as a kid, I just thought she was just another one of the adults. Yeah, um, yeah, so, she's, yeah she's, she hasn't got a very uh, childlike face. No, she hasn't. Quite. No. Uh, I mean, she was only sixteen in this, but yeah. but still. Uh, I mean, I I, I say <laughs> I wrote. I assume she's playing younger or uh, someone with mental issues. <laughs> 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 oh, shots fired! <laughs> because uh, yeah, I think some of the, some of the lines and things that she's coming out with, it's just like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so, but if she was meant to be eleven, I suppose that could be a little bit excused. Um, uh, she can sing. I mean, that's obvious, I guess. But um, <sighs> I don't know. Zone now in those. Bits yeah, of I don't know. I've got, I've got a lot. I've not got a lot. Um, where do you want to go next? I mean, I just. Touch on, rattle the, through. touch on the critics, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, both amateur and um, yes. professional like Fucking Garland gets a lot of praise uh, for this, which is strange. And, which we'll come on to later, appears in lists of greatest child performances. Which, mm. at 16, fucking pushing it anyway, yeah, by yeah. the way. Thank Six, you. That's 16, not really in the yeah, spirit yeah, of those you're things. You're only a couple of years away from being yeah. an adult. Come on. And also, really? Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I do find it difficult to detach it from the uh, from the time that it was filmed. Where um, hammy maybe is not the right word, but it's a kind of a style, right? That you get of of movies from the thirties and forties. Where I think a lot of it is from the theatre, because yes. from the theatre, it's a different medium. You've mm-hmm. got to be in certain ways big. exaggerated, and yeah, big yeah, because you've got to be heard for one hundred percent, yeah, uh, and then you know those. Sort of gestures have got to be seen at the back of a theatre, where from, so uh, there's there's hangovers from that. I yeah. mean, that is definitely when we come to when we speak about the uh, the three, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Oh God, uh, perverts! Yeah, them. Um, they are like very much panto yeah. local theatre. Yeah, overdoing every single yeah hundred percent thing now. This is a kids' film, mm, yep, yep. I guess. Yep. So, you oh, know, it's definitely a kids' film. Same, same, same rules apply that we've 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 done for other things, where it's like, you know, kids might like that sort of thing. It's a bit goofy, a bit silly, and and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, I found I found the uh, Ray Bulger and uh, Jack Haley as the Scarecrow and Tim Man, respectively, irritating, to say the least. Mm, I've got different notes for those. So Bulger is a Scarecrow. I've got. Yeah, settle down, Chief. Yeah. And um, Haley as Tin Man. I, I thought he was genuinely scary. In a sort of, <laughs> looks like he's got a collection of children's shoes sort of way. 
Like, very unsettling. <laughs> like, hmm, keep an eye on that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I do, I, do. Yeah. I, can, I can see that entirely, yep. Uh, and then for La, there's uh, Zeke and all the, the lion. La, yeah, the lion, yep. Yeah, yeah uh, again, I've gone back to, yeah, settle down, chief. I, so I found him less irritating for some reason because I don't know he seemed to have uh, I don't know if it's a lying character that you could kind of oh, let me get him and it, his Put voice him yeah. <laughs> Put him yeah but his voice he must have done Disney film voices surely yeah. he sounds so familiar that yeah. that voice um, but yeah I found him slightly less irritating and a bit more like well you're in a you're in a lion <laughs> suit and mm. being a lion it's kind of okay there was a couple of funny moments mm, or yeah. funny is probably too far uh lightly amusing um moments that the lion had and bert la did that but mm. yeah all right so um hamilton margaret hamilton, margaret wicked hamilton. witch of the west That's slash gulch. the other character yeah gulch um Gulch. I mean, that is the least attractive name you can come up with, isn't it? Well, I, th- I thought she was very good, and I thought she was quite scary. Now, uh, she's you, certainly having fun as well. Yeah, she, if anything, actually is leaning further into the panto side of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you know, in that sense, it's like, well, that's what we kind of think is bad about the rest of them. I guess the thing is, um, she just doesn't come across like a paedophile. So, um, <laughs> you know, uh, I can appreciate what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, she was probably terrifying as that. Uh, as if I watched it thirty five years ago, mm. I can imagine being, yeah. being scared of, of of that yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah, definitely panto villain. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah. About uh, Glinda, the the, uh, the Good Witch of the North. What oh, cunt? <laughs> I've put naff and then in brackets sadistic cunt. Yeah. Jealous. Awful, isn't she? Yeah. She's awful. Yeah. And she meant, like... Setting, setting Dorothy over, like, oh, take these shoes. Yeah. Nothing bad will come of it. <laughs> yeah, but only, only yeah. evil people are ugly. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> All right, fuck off. You're not exactly a lucky yourself, She did, She isn't either. I thought, where have they found her? She's, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> this has been more negative than I actually thought we would be <laughs> already. Um, all right, what about uh, Frank Morgan as the wizard slash... Professor Marvel. That fucking chancer. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't got anything. For no, me. I shrugged. Yeah. I just written shrug. Uh, He's got weird prosthetic cheekbones, but I suppose that's more of a production choice, isn't it? Oh, you th- are they prosthetic? I thought. Yeah. Just well, he, well, you just thought he just looks like another paedophile. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just rounded him up. Him and the shoe collector. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Uh, one, one further shout out for Terry. Uh, which one's Terry? The Is dog. The dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, Overrated dog acting, though I think. Yeah, earned more than the Munchkins. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, the little people, as the uh, as the lead little person mm. said, um, they were paid fifty dollars a week for six day work week, while Toto received one hundred twenty five dollars a week. Yeah, coining it in. Yeah, I think it got replaced halfway through as well. Did he? Yeah, he got stood. On get, or I was going to say, did he get run over? Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he came. I think he came back. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but yeah, come on, Toto gets a lot of uh, a lot of buzz. I think my uh, not doing the right lot. My youngest set was the only thing she liked about the film. Mm. Yeah. Did you watch it with them? Watched it with the fam. Yeah, watched it with the fam. Uh, I'll mean, come on to what the eldest thought about it later. Good. Well, but yeah, I'll the, cover. The, what, I'll cover theories. The youngest, uh, youngest was just she wasn't really there for it. But when Toto was on screen, she oh, there's Toto. So. Oh, interesting, because they'd be in the age bracket that you'd expect to uh, be fully on board with this. But we'll come back to that. Um, did you do recasting, by the way? I did. Okay, yeah. uh, Emily Blunt was Wicked Witch of the West. No, no? <laughs> I mean she could do that. She sure, could she that. could. Um, so who do you want? Uh, start at the top. Right, Dorothy. Mm. Uh, Kiernan Shipka. Go on. Uh, she was. Uh, in... Are you doing this for of, of the time? Or no, are you no, no, modern no, no, recasting. No, no, no a, this is a modern recasting. Okay, okay cool. and it doesn't even necessarily. Um, fit all in the same time either, by the well, way. Well, that's so. fine, yeah. We, we can, um, so, yeah, Kinnan Shipka, she was We're in not Mad really Men. recasting the film, Carl, just to be clear. We're not actually going to make this. Yes, we, we don't have that power yet. No. We haven't got um, the casting couch yet in here. Yeah. But that'll be for something different anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> moving on. Um, yeah, Kinnan Shipka, she was in Mad Men. Uh, not seen it. You've not seen Mad Men? <laughs> don't watch TV, Word. mate. I told you. Uh, she was also in the Sabrina reboot. 
Wait, they rebooted Sabrina the Teenage yeah, Witch? Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, she, she started out in Mad Men very young, and she's fantastic in that, a really good um, child. So is she a child actor? Is she 11? Uh, she will have You're been... You're casting her as an 11-year-old. Yeah, she will have been really... She, she would have been 11 at one point, yeah. She yeah. Would, no, when she definitely. started in Mad Men, you're tall. She would have been around that <laughs> at age. At one point, yeah. she definitely... Yeah. yeah. Okay, now. Right, who do you want next? <laughs> Working our way down. Go for the uh, wizard. Right, Peter Fowl number one. Oh, okay. the wizard. Yeah, no, yeah. I haven't I haven't done the wizard. Okay, fine. Uh, Peter Fowl P- number P- one, the scarecrow. Then. Yeah. Pedo one. Lead Pedo. Yeah, lead Pedo. Lido. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Scarecrow's daft, isn't he? Head full, head full of straw. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jumping about all over the place. <laughs> it's perfect for Ryan Reynolds. I'd, I'd watch this movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tin, Tin Man. Man. Yep. Collects children's shoes. <laughs> yeah. Willem Dafoe. Oh, I thought you were going to go for Buscemi. <laughs> I did think about Buscemi, yeah. But no. <laughs> Willem Dafoe. Yeah, okay. He, you don't want to look under his stairs, do you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and Lion. Ah, The Lion. This is a slightly different. Uh, I've gone for um, James Hetfield circa 1991. James Hetfield, remind me. Oh, for fuck's sake. He's the um, lead singer and rhythm guitarist of Metallica. Uh, and circa 1991, uh, he's he a quite... dead ringer for The Cowardly Lion. <laughs> right, okay. And yeah, if no, you don't like no that... costume, you mean. Just... If you don't like that, Joe Pesci. <laughs> Joe Pesci as a lion would be fucking awesome. Yeah, Joe Pesci we could should... do I'm The sorry, Cowardly Lion. We should make this film. Like, yeah. AI you, can do a lot of shit now. You think of what Joe Pesci's been in, My Cousin Vinny, the, yeah. the Home Alone thing. He's got a Cowardly Line performance in there. Mm. He'd be a hoot, isn't it? Good stuff. Wicked Witch? Wicked Witch of the West. Um, this woman scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Tilda Swinton. <laughs> She's played a witch. She played the White Witch. I don't know what you're talking about. Lion Witch and the Wardrobe? No, no idea. No? Yeah. But, as I said, scares the crap out of me, so she could do that. She's also played a sorceress. Uh, in what? Uh, Doctor Strange? No idea what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, Glinda, the Good Witch of the North. Uh, I, in a, in, a, in a bold move, decided to cast someone attract- who's actually attractive. Good. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. She's quite attractive, but uh, I've gone for the fact that she's nice, which is Emma Thompson. Oh, you can't get nicer than Emma Thompson. Yeah, lovely, isn't she? Has she ever played a bad character? Oh, I don't know, but she's great. She's a, she's a, she's struggled to believe she was evil, which means you should probably yeah. play an evil person. She gets a kit off in uh, Good Luck Leo Grand. Um, you know, which isn't... Uh, is it the reason I watched the film? It might be. They, they, they did the clips on, like... It's an odd film crush, on, I'll be on, on TikTok. You know, where they do... They, they cut it up and do segments, and she's in this thing, and she's like, um, I'd like to have a, do uh, a blowjob, um, if it's still called that. Uh, we'll do, and I was like, I'm sort of watching this. She's running through all these sexual acts, and I'm going, uh, yeah, 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 go on. We'll give, we'll, 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 we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. Um, it's all right. Um, fill the hole, giggity. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. You got anything for Toto? Uh, no. You know, Dial of the dog. Let's chuck her in there. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Any more? No. Do you want to play a game now? Oh, I'd love to play a game. Alrighty. So this game, Carl, is called Wizard or Oz. Wizard or Oz. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a name, and you have to say whether it's a famous wizard from the world of film. So wizard. Oh yes, you, or, yeah. As 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 you said, yeah. I've fucking got no chance. Here. Exactly. Right. Most people would be like, we know "Yeah, this is away. easy." Yeah. No, no. Or a name of a place in Australia or Austria, Oz. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's either a wizard, yeah. or it's Austria. Is this like Oz? When, huh? um, is this like when fucking Americans accidentally fly to Vienna? <laughs> 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 anyway, go on. Right. You ready? <clears throat> yeah. Do I have to tell you whether it's Australia or Oz? No, you just say Oz if you think it's either. Yeah, it's Oz, yeah. yeah. Wizard okay. or Oz. Yeah, of course. Yep, you got it. It's the name of the game. It's, indeed. Uh, okay, I have to zoom in because I can't really fucking read this. Um, all right, ready? Yeah. Ibiswold. Oh. Is it a place in Australia or Oz? It could Austria? be a place in Austria, that. Um, or is it I, I've, I've no clue. Whether it's a wit, it could be a wit, but I've no clue. So, given it sounds slightly Austrian, let's go with a place in Austria. It is Oz. Correct. Iberswald is a municipality of the district of Deutschlandsburg in the Austrian state of Styria. Yeah. So, if you said it properly, that would be giving the game away, wouldn't it, really? What do you mean? Well, it won't be Wald, will it be Wald? Iberswald. Yeah. Okay, fine. Um, howl. Uh, howl. howl. Yeah, it could be in Australia. It's more likely to be in Australia, but equally, it could be a, a wizard. Weird, there's a fucking weird name in Australia for sure. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, wizard. 
It is a wizard yeah. from Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, this Japanese yeah. animation that yeah. you'd love. Yeah, I love that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll pronounce this one correctly for you. Oh, yeah. Grindelwald. Ah, I'm pretty sure that's a wizard. Oh, is this actually basing this on knowledge? Uh, but then, who knows, because I, I might have just heard that thrown out in, in you know, discussion. And, oh, yeah, that's that wizardy shit and then zoned out, so who knows? <laughs> it, could, it could be Grindr something else. What are you going else. for? Yeah, let's go wizard. It is a wizard. Yeah. Yes, from Harry Potter. Yeah, or, Harry, or, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's also a place in Switzerland. Ah. Hmm. Um, Which isn't Austria, crucially. So that would have been exactly. that would have been a right gotcha, wouldn't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly, you see. Yeah. Game within a game. Uh Gargamel. Ah, now. Hmm. That's so stupid. Hmm. That if we were dealing with any other country, <laughs> yeah. you'd go wizard. But I'm gonna go Oz. No, it is wizard. It's from the Smurfs. It's yeah. also a sportswear shop in Istanbul. Mm, fair enough. Yeah. Um, not a fan of the Smurfs? I uh, no, no, never really watched no. it. Um, okay, next one. Orgathella. Mm. Orgathella. Is it Wizard or is it Oz? I've no idea. I don't think you've done three in a row in a while in these games, so let's go Wizard. <laughs> but there would have been three. All oh, right, I see. I see what you're doing. Yeah. Looking at it. It's Oz. Sorry. Yeah, no, not Wizard. So. Yeah. Uh, Ogathera is a rural town and a locality in the Shire of Merwith, Queensland, with a population of 328. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously Australia, not yeah. Austria. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uluru. Oh, yeah, that's Australia. Yeah. You know what it is? Ayers Rock. Well done. Um, Barmed Man. Barmed Man. Mm. I mean, I could see that in Austria. I could see it in mm-hmm. Australia. Mm-hmm. Australians are bred for Bauer, isn't it? It's instinct. Um, <laughs> but let's man. go wizard. It's Oz. Mm. It's an old gold, gold mining town, now Australia. known for its therapeutic yeah. mineral pool in yeah. Australia. Fair enough. Yep. Um, Saruman. Oh, that's uh, that's fucking... There's got to be something out of Lord of the Rings or something. It like is that. out of the Lord of the Rings, yeah. yes. Well done. So what are you yeah. saying? Oh, Oz. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wizard. Yeah. Wizard, yes, from Lord of the Rings, Saruman. Uh, Scamander. See, that sounds. This is the last wizardy. one, by the way. This is the sounds last one. Pretty wizardy. Yeah, fuck it, wizard. It's actually both. Uh, it is both a wizard, you. Newt Scamander from Harry Potter you Universe, sneaky. author and protagonist of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and it's also a small town at the mouth of the Scamander River between St Helens and St Marys on the northeast coast of Tasmania. Yeah, very good. So there you go. There you go. That's Wizard Oz. You did pretty well. Not actually. bad. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, Happy not with bad. that. Well done. All right, move on and on to production as Carl finishes off the themed beer and back on to the Sunny Migs. Very um, good, that beer, by the way. Yeah, it was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, enjoying it. Um, I'm still working my way through yours, as, as, is, the, uh, as is the way. Uh, anyway, production. So, I'm going to be kind here, right, and say that I think this is a strength of the movie when you consider the time it was made. I agree. Um, that is not to say... That you, if you judged it by today's standards, oh well, I th- I, you know, I think um, I think some of it holds up. I think you can see the influence of you think how like um, vivid and sort of surreal Oz is, mm-hmm. and I think you can see influences in things like The Grinch, like Whoville, and The Grinch like that. And sure. in fact, if you mm-hmm. think of that sort of aesthetic, that permeates a lot of kids' TV. And yeah, it's definitely Christmas influential. Films, I can see stuff that. like that. So. So I think it holds up in that regard. It's going for that, and it, it achieves that. Yeah, I mean the there's the use of the Technicolor. Yeah, um, one of the first there. ones. Yep. Yeah. So it's obviously groundbreaking in terms of, of that, and actually it's very effectively used as well. Going yeah. from that sort of sepia, is, that, is it sepia when they're on the farm? Is it? I don't uh, know. If it, let's was go it sepia. Straight black and white, but yeah, um, sepia. And then she opens the door and, and reveals the Technicolor world of Right, so that's a good pr- good production choice, right? Because yes. you can go, well, we can do colour. But we don't have to do colour all the we time. Can, we can do colour because this is still going to hit because it's still going to be hyper vivid and mm. mad. But the decision to go, no, let's not, is, is a good one. It is good. Uh, so it is cool. I did like it. Um, 
I did like some of the practical effects that they were doing and some of the tricky like tricky stuff they did, like the uh, Glinda appearing in a bubble and that bubble sort of moving and stuff. Like I imagine that'd be very tricky to very tricky to do. Like it's, it's not done perfectly, but it's you uh, know interestingly, mm -hmm. critics that was one of the uh, more negative reviews. Really? Yeah, they did not like that particular thing because they were like some of the effects are good, but no amount of and this particular critic went into some of the technicalities around it. Oh, fuck it. I, I changed my mind and it's shit. Yeah. It, he went into... But he said, no amount of this, that, or the other is going to make that look... Or he's going to fool you into thinking that works sort of thing. So, yeah, that was actually one of the things that was called. Oh, interesting. Bad, but. Painted scene. So you're being kind of do it than you need I me. was being kind of. I didn't even write that on my notes. I just plucked that <laughs> off thin air trying to throw it a bone. But fuck no, it, but, I was uh, wrong. But, there are, but there are some good um, practical effects going on. There are. I mean, the, the, the bits... Um, <laughs> Like where uh, there's a puff of smoke, mm. and she she disappears. It's <laughs> it's not very subtly done that the, the camera just pans away as she fucking runs away. And well, there's back. one where you you see her run to it, Mark. Yeah. Uh, in, in in one of the opening scenes, it's it, like it's very theatre. It's like really, is that the best we can do? Could you not have just had her be there anyway? You know. Yeah. We, yeah. So there yeah. are there are mo painted scenery though, um, is there? Mm. Well done for painting, uh, <laughs> but. Does look like a theatre backdrop. Doesn't actually look like real. No, but I don't think they're going for that. No, either. perhaps not. But it looks like again panto scenery that mm. that my mate John's done. <laughs> I mean, you needn't worry about um, trying to convince me because this is the only positive thing I've got to say about the film. <laughs> so. um, <laughs> what else have I got mm. positive? Oh, by the way, I've I've noticed by the way because I've been listening to a few. Um, episodes of, of this, our own podcast of, of this back recently you're the new listener yeah maybe uh, and i've realized and you know people can maybe disagree with this but this is the way i perceived it we've kind of got mo's so when we're defending the films that we like oh, right, we've got go-to's have we yeah um your mo is, seems to be um just uh, simply um saying stuff didn't happen so, you, you, yeah, so I'll, I'll go like, oh, there's this, and then you'll go, deny it. no, that's not right. Yeah, you'll just you'll just deny it, and I'll and then because I haven't written a specific example down, so I was thinking to myself, I need to start writing examples down. <laughs> because I, because I think, well, he couldn't have missed this, and then you just deny it, and then they go, Am I, have I got that? And then I'll go look back, I'll I'll watch it back again, or, or like a section, or I'll read other reviews, and go, no, that is fucking there. What's he talking about? <laughs> um, my mo appears to be. Um, when I get bogged down, it's just simply to attack you and your character. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. nice. Okay. So yeah. I'll, I'll sort of sidestep the discussion. Well, I'll stop convincing him about the film and I'll just say he's a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, uh, which I quite like, so I plan to continue that. Um, just so you know. Uh, just want to be clear, MO, not a backronym. Uh, modus operandi, no, I believe... Um, that would be a weird one if they... No, it uh, wouldn't be an acronym on. either, by the way. Oh, for uh, fuck's an sake. Initialism. You don't no. say Mo, do you? <laughs> See, I've done it again. Why yeah, do I do it? I've opened, but, 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 I've opened I myself up to it. But I don't think it's a backronym, no. Uh, no, because it's not a fucking acronym for a start. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, the songs, Carl. I know you're a big fan. Oh, God. Yeah. So, my issue with the songs is that there's only one semi-good one. Can I tell you how much of a fan I am of the songs? Go on. Let's do a little test. Do you know the lyrics to the Wizard of Oz song? And I don't. What I do don't, you mean the I Wizard of Oz? I don't need you to know them all, but like somewhere we're off the to see the wizard. We're off to see the wizard, the yeah. wonderful Wizard of Oz. Yeah. What's next? Because, 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 because. No, that's not what's next. The wonderful Wizard of Oz. No, I don't know. No, well, neither do I. Right. So in all the time, I probably watched this film <laughs> depressingly because of before mentioned children and siblings. I probably mm. watched this film double digits, and then of course that film just by uh, that song just by osmosis is ever present. I st I've never bothered. To fucking figure out what the actual words were, and right. the, the misses, meanwhile, and the kids, yep. singing along, and all the way. Oh, what are they singing? That? I don't know. What this, yeah, don't know. Well, so they, they at least they they do remember it. Um, so <laughs> I say one good song, "Somewhere Over the Rainbow." Pretty, pretty decent, memorable. I can remember the words to it. That's mm -hmm. fine. Sticks in my head. Having said that, the rest of the songs are shit. I was still fucking humming and singing along after I watched this earlier today. <laughs> You have to see the buzzers, the buzzers, the buzzers. I mean, I don't know any more than that. And just like, follow the yellow brick road. Yeah. Follow the yellow brick road. Uh, yeah, uh, interestingly, you're picking out the vocal line there where it sounds like, because a few of the Munchkins, a fair few of the Munchkins sounded like they're on 60 a day. <laughs> yeah. 
And that, yeah, that vocal line on that really cut through, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, th- they're only like literal lines, parts of it. Like the, the songs are pretty unmem- mm. unmemorable and also irritating. Yeah, really but, irritating. And, and because this is the bit that I don't like about musicals, right? If you're going to use a song, use it to help tell us something and progress the story as you're going rather than just having a break for a song. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it, it's got to be there for a reason. Totally. Um, and I don't think any of these do that, to be fair. The most irritating thing that I found about the songs is they're fucking lazy. So the three songs relating to the uh, Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion, they've just used the same thing. They mm. just like insert what are they missing mm. and change the words a little bit. Mm. It's like, come on, come up with some independent songs for each of them that are specific to them and are different. Because it just means it's just like, uh-huh, yeah, mm-hmm. You go, we're going to talk about this in the plot, about repetitive, but it's just like, oh, she meets someone, they sing a song, they walk a bit, they meet someone, they sing a song, they walk a bit, they meet someone, they sing a song, they walk yeah. a bit. And it's just like... I think this is a big <sighs> part, because it's not a long runtime. It's, it's our felt a lot longer. It did, and I think this is a big part of it, because we're constantly having to stop for these songs. And if you're not into them, Jesus Christ... And the, I don't think they even have confidence in them, right? So in the Munchkin land bit, they go through about five, six different songs, but each one only lasts about 25 seconds. Mm. And then they, they keep on going through. It's like they, they didn't have, a good, they didn't have a, a, good, a good one that could, could tie it all together. You wouldn't, I don't think you'd find that nowadays in, um, in any sort of Disney musical or anything mm. like that. They wouldn't just be like, oh, fuck it, let's just throw in a few, uh, a few lines, sing song, dance around a bit. Yeah. Like they, all, they all do have something. Um. Talking about the length and the pacing, we said hour 42. Uh, one thing I want to point out, thank Christ we got rid of credits at the start of movies where it just lists everything mm. whilst nothing is happening. Yeah, I mean, there's still some of that in some films, isn't there? Like Bond films do and stuff. Not, they, they not the first thing you see. First, don't yeah, they? exactly. Before you do, the, before you do that. Yeah, and something's stuff. going on when you've got the credits going, right? You've got the yeah. Bond, you've got we'll the Bond we'll theme we'll and a lot of in, interesting visuals and stuff. Yeah, in, in this is just movies. text on screen, text on screen, yeah. text on screen, text on screen. Fuck's sake. Yeah, agreed. Um, but yeah, so get on with it, basically. Um, but on the length of it, there's no reason why it needs to be an hour 42 either. You can tighten this, this up yeah. significantly. <laughs> Type 40. Uh, yes. <laughs> Bish, bash, bosh. In Definitely under 90 minutes, though. Come on. Um, you've got about 15, 20 minutes at the start until you get to the Twister and, and Oz and the whole getting to Munchkin land and stuff. The Munchkin land thing's way too long. It's too many, oh, too really many songs. Is. Goes yeah. on way too long. Doesn't actually progress the plot anyway. After after she's got the slippers and... Yeah, after that cunt's given her the slippers off and you set go. for a fall. Yeah. Send her on your way. Let's get, let's get moving. So, yeah. Um, you got anything productive? Yeah, so um, there are some myths that surround the production of this. Mm-hmm. Um, things like Munchkin hanging themselves on set. <laughs> heard that? Have you not heard that? No. no. Yeah, did, did they, it's not true. It's not true. Okay. But, uh, well, it's good. It, it, it prevails. It's one of the things, like I said, when people were slagging it off. That's one of the really? things they cited, yeah. Um, but there are some true stories about it which are, which are not very good um, so Tin Man mm. uh, actual pedophile <laughs> yeah. Tin Man with his collection of children's shoes under the <laughs> stairs uh, so Bulger who is Scarecrow mm-hmm. swapped roles with an actor called Buddy Ebsen right because um Bolger was initially cast as Tin Man. Right. And one of Bolger's sort of heroes, his theatre heroes, was a guy who I can't remember the name of, but played um, Scarecrow in a stage production. Mm-hmm. So when Bolger got near to this, he was like, oh, I, I really want Scarecrow. I've been cast as Tin Man, but I really want Scarecrow. Went to Buddy Ebsen. Can we swap? Buddy Ebsen was like, sure. Buddy Ebsen will come to regret that decision. Uh, because the makeup that they used for Tin Man, uh, for Buddy Ebsen, mm-hmm. was uh, like a, an aluminium powder. Yeah. Ended up clogging up his lungs. He ended up spending quite a bit of time in hospital. The studio didn't believe him. 
And we're like, what do you mean you can't breathe? <laughs> what, do you mean you, what do you mean your lungs are coated with aluminium and you, you, you can't oxygenate your blood? Get back to set. Uh, and like basically nurses had to intervene and go, shut up, he's going to die if you um, keep... Isn't keep this the way a Bond girl died? Uh, no, I think that's. Uh, they painted her in like in painted oh, in like gold. in the in the in the not in real life yeah. <laughs> in the movie. They painted in gold, and they basically like yeah, her skin couldn't breathe, and she just died. Yeah. No, that is a is a thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he had to be replaced. He had to replaced with uh, Haley. Is it is it uh, Jack Haley? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, and then they sort of went, oh well, we'll we'll mix this aluminium powder into a paste, and then rub that on, so that it's not. <laughs> you know, for everyone to breathe metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so obviously, yeah, that's that's not very nice. No. Uh, there were explosions on the set, obviously to do with the practical effects. Oh yeah. Uh, Margaret, what's her face? Wicked Witch of the West. Yes. She got um, some burns on her face. Uh, Margaret Hamilton. Body. Yeah. Um, she managed to plow on. Um, Trooper. And then, uh, who is it? It's on the broom. There's somebody on the broom at some point. I don't think that it's the Witch of the North. Is it the East? No, wasn't it? Oh no, West you're right. It is the Wicked Witch of the West. The but it's a stunt double. All oh, right. So there's a stunt double on the broom. Broom explodes, and that left the stunt double What's with broom permanent. Broom explode. So there's a there's an effect where it like a puff of smoke where oh, okay. they're flying on the broom, and that left the stunt double with um, permanent damage to their leg. Mm, nice. That's very nice. Uh, they were concerned about Judy Garland's weight. Yes, I read that. Yeah, they, and, she was basically uh, on a soup diet. Well, soup, and they gave her um, some pet pills. Yes. To suppress her appetite, uh, which some people uh, sort of uh, said might have started her uh, prescription drug habit that came in. Uh, died like. at 45, didn't she? Yeah. Apparently she got slapped around by the director a bit as well. They did not treat her well on, uh, on set. Um, asbestos Maybe Snow. They fucking hated her character as well. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop looking like Gabby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Asbestos Snow. Yes, no, that's that's never good. Yep, the snow um, <laughs> yeah. that they used in the, the in the poppy field after it to to wake him up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they they knew about the health hazards at that point as well. It wasn't like oh yeah, we just use asbestos because we're ignorant of it. They actually knew. This is the thing, isn't it? When people like slag off health and say, oh, it's health and safety gone mad. It's gone, like, yeah. Let's just <laughs> take a step back here uh, and just think uh, what people will do if there are no rules. Uh, so yeah, so apparently um, quite a lot of uh, bad stuff went on the set, which which then led to some urban myths as well, like the Munchkin dying. And, mm. and then apparently there's a, a, a theory that surfaced later and gained quite a lot of traction online that this was a cursed movie and there's, um, you know, all sorts of shit. Who knows? Don't, don't get in front of that shit. Uh, but yeah, fun fun production. Anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 well, it doesn't look quite good, so, you know. Yeah. There's a price to pay. In the- Worth it. Um <laughs> <laughs> The uh, the lion costume as well was made of real lion skin. I read. Oh really? Yep. Seems excessive. <laughs> yeah. Like, who's looking? Yeah. Like, who's who's going to imagine? Oh my god! They've used fake fur for oh. God's sake. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Um. But yeah, apparently got sort quite production, got quite there? hot on set under all the lights and things. So oh, yeah, he got okay. pretty sweaty yeah, in I there. Bet. So it would be soaked through that costume by the end, and it was two people's responsibility to dry Bring that it out. out. <laughs> Yummy. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it reeked uh, oh, after after a while. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, good lord. Yeah. He, he didn't look like a uh, a non smelly man. Let's put it that way. He, no. he looked like he had an odor to him. <laughs> you got yeah, anything well, else? Oh, all pedophiles do, don't they? Um, well, how's no. he gonna know they're coming? <laughs> <laughs> You can tell this film is from uh, 1934, can't you? The way we're just haphazardly libeling, uh, yeah, 39, haphazardly libeling people left, right, and centre. Yeah, they're all dead. It's fine. Um, Okay, let's move on to the plot. Um, Right, I'm just going to describe the plot to you in 30 seconds, Carl. You ready? Oh, hang on. Can I do this? Oh, maybe you've got the same joke. But there was a like a like a TV listing that that goes viral about this. No, I've not seen it. Uh, it says transported to a surreal landscape, a young girl kills the first person she meets, and then teams up with three strangers to kill again. <laughs> I like it. I mean, I've got a slightly longer version. Okay, okay, go, 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 go. Okay, you ready? Yeah. 
So, an irresponsible owner of a vicious dog attempts to run away from home at second thoughts and after sustaining a head injury has a dream about a magical place run by a con man and under instruction of a superficial fairy steals a dead person's shoes and collects a series of emotionally damaged farmhands in cosplay seeking a quick fix to their problems all whilst being chased by a panto villain with a worrying skin condition which later hunts down and murders to steal the sweeping brush that can take her home after coming to the realisation that her life is a spoiled kid on a farm surrounded by people that care for her might be better than she first thought returning to said life with no repercussions teaching children everywhere the valuable lesson that crime does pay <laughs> yeah fair enough yeah yeah, yeah. You like it's it? all there but i'll cover it yeah cool well so on that uh little segue what just, do you think sorry i just i'm just still laughing at the kills the first person <laughs> she meets <laughs> and then just kills again <laughs> teams with three strangers <laughs> to kill again and <laughs> um, what do you think this uh film is about are you are you buying any of the subtext no me neither what is it? What, what there is, is a lot, of, and again, I couldn't fucking like, glean this information like, from very, Letterboxd, very simply, right? Oh no! It, surely it's just things aren't always better over the rainbow. Basically, you know, it's like things are fine at home, kind of thing. No. Well, um, let me give That'll you the be guff. about as extreme as I would take. Let it. me give you the guff first before <clears throat> we come back down to earth. All right, okay, go on. Now, I couldn't glean this information from Letterbox as discussed because, oh, it's such a classic. Yeah, but spot. Why? <laughs> Why is it? So you went to Reddit. Uh, yeah, Reddit. I also read some um, critic uh, reviews and, and some pieces online. If you just Google, what is The Wizard of Oz about? Hmm. People are going really deep on this. Like the, the societal commentary side of it and the lessons this can teach us, yada, yada, yada. Um, there was one article that said seven things that The Wizard of Oz could be about could be right, right and they sure. were contradictory it's like well hang on a minute chief Wait, which one yeah, yeah come, on. come on now um and i'm going to come on to that later because i'm not um against people um you know sort of uh, really clicking with a film and then reading into it something that's deeper than is perhaps i've there. never done that shut up no you haven't but that's that's their well <laughs> yeah. that's the that's the their prerogative right but in the context of, we're talking about this as like being held up as a classic, mm-hmm. and we're trying to work out fucking why. Yeah, none of that is there, I don't think. And I have some facts to back that up. Go for it. Hit so me. Baum or Baum, Baum. depending yeah. on the name, Baum, the author of the book. Yep. He thought that children's books should not contain any moral lessons, and that children should be allowed to be children. Okay. So I know that's the book. The source material, not the film. Well, I was expecting it to be the other way around, that the book would have no. the more more going on, right? So straight out the gates, let's fucking just skewer this thing, right. right? So then, can we get to... Maybe the filmmaker has decided that, no, we're going to introduce yep. a level of social commentary and some moral lessons and all that stuff. There's a, there's a deeper message here. Couldn't find a thing out of them to say. I looked at early reviews, the ones that came out at the mm-hmm. time. None of them are mentioning social commentary. Um, the... That Social side commentary of it, wasn't invented until 1964, though. So, but you know what? It's funny. That side of it is a, it, that has come along later. People looking at it yeah. and re-examining it. They go, oh, oh, you, it, why this is so good is because it's about this. It's, it's not about that. That's you doing yeah. that, projecting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now I can get on board with Roger Ebert's take on this. Oh yeah, uh, which was he thought it dealt well with childhood insecurities and reassures them them being children. Mm-hmm. Which is fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah like the girl's fun. scared and it's just, yeah, no, it's okay, she's come through. Right, that's as deep as I'm willing to yeah. go with this. I don't think... Go on, what are people telling us? I what? don't think there's anything going on there. What do you mean what people tell us? Well, what, oh, what? I'm not a fucking... No, I didn't Nothing? write that shit down. No? Okay, fine. No, Christ Can you almighty. remember any, any, any crazy ones off the top of your head, though? Oh, it's just like as deep as you want it to go, right? Okay. There, there was about how people are institutionalised, how they're forced into jobs... Uh, a particular jobs um, and how they've got sort of no path forward and this and that and the other. A- wow, anyth- okay, anything right, anything okay. you want, right? It was all out there and that is just all a modern confection. Mm. It's not. It's not something that is present in the source material. It's not something that I can find evidence for in the reviews at the time and the, and the director's sort of take on it and I watch it and I don't fucking see that. So I'm not buying that as a reason why we should hold that up as a, as right. a classic yeah, yeah, uh, at all. Um, Fair enough. Um, one of the problems I have with the plot side of thing or story, uh, I don't know the difference still. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. 
So they're very explicit, right? That it was all a dream. Mm. Why couldn't they have left that a little bit more? Was it all a dream? Ooh, was ah, it? well, I've got Ooh. some. I've got. I've got a fact for you on that as well. I think. Yeah. Um, so the the filmmakers, uh, the producers, and director and whatnot, they thought that audiences at the time would be too sophisticated to accept this as merely a fantasy. So they made a very deliberate choice to make it a dream. Right? Which is like kind of what's the difference? Mm. But I guess they thought a child daydreaming and thinking about whatever silly adventure she's about to have, no, that would that that would be rejected by audiences. But um but if we make it a dream, yeah, that's uh that's all right. Now, I don't fully understand what that means either. But I, I we can have... say that they made a fucking deliberate choice to make it a dream. Yeah, they, they thought I would have found winner. it a lot more interesting, right? If they hadn't done the whole um, blatantly um, telegraphing with the farm hands and stuff and, and each well, saying about the heart and the courage and the, yeah. the other thing. I got, I got two observations on this. Brain. Firstly, the general point of the dream. Um, when we got to the end, my eldest went, so, it was, so it's well, like Alice in Wonderland then? <laughs> like the dream, because yeah. it's all the dream. And the implication and the look on her face told me that, that she was very, this fucking lazy trope. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Um, no, my other observation is, I didn't realise it was a dream until I watched it this time. Really? Because my memory of this film, all I remember about the opening section is the house blowing off. Yeah. I don't remember any don't of remember the, the, other the characters, you know, the three paedophiles grooming her. Um, <laughs> I don't remember any of that. Um, and then as for the ending section, I don't remember that at all. I don't. I mean, I don't know why, quite why the uh, the farm hands uh, that are grooming uh, the 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 nephew. Uh, sorry, the nephew, the niece. Of, is it Uncle Henry? I don't it's know why he's let them in the bedroom. Um, <laughs> got to make but sure I don't, I don't remember anything. Sure she doesn't remember anything. My, my, yeah, I, the thing I remember is they kill the, the they get the second kill as as they went out yeah. out, to, out to get. And they all, you know, the con man gives them their um, their bits, sort of. Yeah. Uh, Not and really, then that's though. it. So I, I didn't remember it as a dream at all. So I was watching it this time. Like you say, you watch the intro and you're like, oh, God, yeah, okay. And I'm watching it, and, yeah, it's all a dream. And then you get this weird scene. They make the it so, it's, it's just, a, and that's what annoying, right? <laughs> Strange. Just like, they could have made it a bit like, oh, it's only obvious that it's a dream at the end. Yeah. And that's fine. Like the fact they completely telegraph the the three characters. It the fact that even make when sense. the when it's when it's like the house is spinning in the tornado or whatever. Yeah. And then the gulch or whatever her name is is cycling. Yeah, yeah. And then turns into the witch. You're like you don't just yeah. like have the witch. Yeah. And then it's just like well you you're in it now and then you're like oh yeah. And I mean then, as a kid I probably just thought why is there a wicked witch on a bike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even necessarily make sense right because. She's given the farmhands her insecurities, but the farmhands are there in the dream. So, yeah. like, are they, like, are they supposed to have undergone a journey as well? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, it's an odd it's an odd choice. I thought. Yeah. Um, so also, oh God. there's spin-offs to this, right? Uh, yeah. So there's Return to Oz. Yeah. Which is a direct sequel. Mm-hmm. And then we've got films coming out now, uh, Wicked and Wicked. Wicked yeah. Too, there's right? also uh, Oz the Great and the Powerful. Right, none of these make fucking sense if it's a dream, no. unless Dorothy's written them. Mm. Yeah. Because who's what? Like, it's it's a dreamland. What, there's no before and after. It's a fucking dream. She probably fell asleep again. To be fair. Um, well, I've... the return to us, I can accept because she's in that. She's not in the other stuff. Mm. It's not mm. a re- built around her. Like, if it's a follow-on dream, sure, we've all had those mm. dream sequels. Who knows? Um, I, dream sequel? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not really sure. You have repetitive dreams, I suppose, that maybe ad- adapt a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Different conversation. Anyway, shit. Um, <laughs> the bits I did like. I've written one thing down. <laughs> um, so there was, it was a couple of bits of kind of playful, uh, bantering, teasing bit, which I can get on board with. All right, go on. Um, so Miss Gulch, um, when she arrives at the farm and says like, Gail? And Uncle Henry goes, well, howdy, Miss Gulch. And she goes, I want to see you and your wife right away about Dorothy. Dorothy, well, what's Dorothy done? What's she done? I'm all but lame and about the bite of my leg. You mean she bit you? No, her dog. 
oh, she bit a dog, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no! And it's like, I could, I could do with more of that stuff going on, where it's just like, yeah, we're taking the piss out of ridiculous characters. Like, give me some more of that. That might have been the height of dramatic acting at that point. You like that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, mine or the, on the film? Sorry. Well, yours is very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I hey, you should fucking hear the stories I read. Read the boy yeah. at night. Brilliant. You got to put some voices. Oh, in, you? fantastic! Yeah. If I do say so myself. The thing is, I, I I try this as well, and my kids go, just "Daddy, we just read it normally." <laughs> <laughs> yes, but this is for me, so I am interested. Okay, yeah. <laughs> do you not understand I, this? I don't <laughs> like it when you do the silly voices. <laughs> I do. No, Theo, I think Theo likes it. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway. Um, We've talked about, uh, I've touched on briefly, it gets quite repetitive as they travel towards the city. Yeah. The arrival at Emerald City is a real letdown as well. Like, they've, they've basically followed this yellow brick road, the whole thing, follow the yellow brick road. There's one. The yellow brick road represents the gold standard. Fuck because off. Because this film is about the fall of populism in the US. No, it's not. No, of course it's not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the whole section of the Emerald City I found really unmemorable. Like, to the point... Where, yeah, I told you that I wasn't going to rewatch this because who had the fucking time? Yes, I yes, did. You though. tried I did. to shirk your fucking. I did. Job one. Of I this did podcast. rewatch it, but I did watch some clips to start with. And guess what wasn't included in any of the clips? Anything of that whole section of the film? Because there were people like, no one wants to rewatch this shit. Pointless. Yeah. So they basically missed me about thirty minutes of the film mm. because who cares? Um, what else we got? Oh right, so. Bit of an issue, moral issue here. So <laughs> Wizard of Oz, right, says, bring me the broomstick of the Wicked Witch of the Yeah, go West, kill, right? go no, kill. No, 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 no. He says, bring me the broomstick, mm, right? Yeah. And they go, oh, we're going to have to kill her. Yeah. It's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. Well, she's she, got bloodlust at this point. She mate. goes to sleep. Like, yeah. you can just steal it when she's sleep. Like, yeah. come on, put her in the poppy fields. Whoa, gone. Yeah. Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Then bring it, get that white powder around. Bring her right round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I uh, I thought the Wizard of Oz was a prick. Oh. Um, con man, I think you said in your description. I think I mentioned con man as well. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. An, it's an apt um, it's meant description be, though, for him. For that one, to be fair, huh? he's meant to be a bit of a con yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, he it's... is for the first bit, but then even when he's outed, he merely drops a different con on them. Yes, because because he he doesn't go oh, so, so about that. Yes. <laughs> he starts going. Ah, oh, oh, right, wait, hold, what's that. in my bag? <laughs> yeah, it's almost like that fast show. Scene. Even better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he he just he just tricks the three simpletons, mm-hmm. the three pedos, into something else. Um, <laughs> so, oh, you don't you don't need that. You, one of these is what you want. Um, so yeah, he, he's he's a real prick with his weird prosthetic cheekbones. Oh, you know what else I found. Uh-huh. Or yeah, found whilst I was rewatching it that a classic case of a line being misattributed, misattributed. Oh, yeah. That's not a word. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it it's not really the line of the film, right? So you, the line. Oh right, okay, but that's not fly, my word. pretties, fly. Yeah. Never says that. Yeah, she just goes fly, fly. Yeah, she just <laughs> refers to her pretties a lot, doesn't she? She says pretties, but she calls yeah. uh, Dorothy a pretty. She's a yeah. pretty, but she never says that line. And yeah. that is something that in my head is attributed to Wizard of Oz. So it's yeah. one of those, one of those. I did like the flying monkeys though. Mm, and yeah, I, I quite like the flying monkeys. Oh, there was a there was a there was a point about oh, well, symbolism abused. of flying oh, mon- no. monkeys as well. Oh, so really, um, right. <laughs> Yeah, go on. I can't remember. Honestly, mate, it was such bollocks. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, something about how the inevitability of those. It could only have been flying monkeys. I'm, I'm like, what? Sure. I've, I've never heard of flying monkeys outside of this. Oh, of this no, film. no. It, I thought it was very uh, particular yeah. to it. Um, I thought the flying monkeys were good, and actually should have brought this up in production. I thought they did that really well in the scene where the there are the flying monkeys are attacking them and stuff. The, the flight they're doing in that is pretty uh, impressively mm. done. And actually, the fact that they are people in suits doing it, much better than actually CGI yeah. flying monkeys, which yeah. they did in Oz Great and the Powerful, which was shite. Right. Um, what year is that? 2000. And oh, okay. It's got James Franco in it. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, Mila Kunis and someone else. I can't remember. But um, it's, quite, it's very unmemorable. I can't, I can't remember anything about it apart from the CGI monkeys. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Yeah, do you want to hear about some deleted scenes? Ooh, yeah. I say deleted scenes. What did scenes. the Tin Man do to her? 
uh, I said delete scenes. I don't know if these were ever filmed. They were part of the script, and then the okay. directors decided not to not to film them. Um, so let me dive in on that one. Not the Tin Man, but the Scarecrow. Uh-huh. Uh, so you know, I've joked about how I found the ending um, uh, a bit weird because quite why all these farm hands are in the bedroom of the girl they're no doubt grooming mm. um, is 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 a bit weird. Why the uncle stuff that I don't know, but yeah, when they get back, because there's a hole to the scarecrow. I'm, I'm gonna miss you. Most you the of most, all. yeah. That was weird, yeah. didn't it? It's a bit oh, big, that's, that's big because, fuck you to the other two as well. Well, that's no because the reason. scarecrow was supposed to fuck Dorothy. Really? Yeah. So there was a scene that was going to be filmed. Uh, I thought for it was the only end, scarecrow that got stuffed. Where she? Where, hey, <laughs> ooh, where she? Um, uh, that's very good, actually. I, I liked. Um, might find like a like a round of applause. <laughs> so we'll just put, we'll put that in there. Yeah. So we need the soundboard, you see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, there was a scene where she was like supposed to, I don't know, I guess it's supposed to move on the story at the end, but she was supposed to go off to college uh, and they were supposed to get engaged or something like that. Really? Yeah, yeah. There was, they so were she's 11? To, they were supposed to get together. This is the thing, isn't it? It's like, mm, it's, it's weird, all of that. Um, also, you talked earlier about uh, musicals and these songs just don't advance the story at all. Yeah. There was going to be a section where they encountered um, a, a sort of a, an evil princess who'd outlawed all um, music uh, in Oz, <laughs> right. uh, except for music to your ears, opera that? and something else, right? Um, and then they were to basically have a sing-off <laughs> right. to prove her worth or whatever. Wow! And she ended up Dorothy. Ended up doing, I think, I don't know if it's, yeah, I think it's a song, Jitterbug, a song, Ooh, okay. rendition of this, right? Right, because they thought that would appeal to young audiences. Oh, uh, right. That was at the time, and then of course the Munchkins and whoever else never did anything like that. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's amazing. They cut that. So it's fuck. basically like Back to the Future, then. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly <laughs> that Back to the Future. Bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they the cut kids that. Kids are gonna so, love yeah. it. So, uh, so yeah, we could have had more music, which would have been really out of step. And more paedophilia. And, uh, yeah, really nailing down that paedophilia. <laughs> Just in case there was any doubt about the grooming going on on that farm I really whatsoever. Hope, I really, really hope we've ruined this film to whoever's listening to this. Yeah, I mean... It just would be fun. Open your eyes, maybe, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then of course we've already we've already touched oh, yeah. on Glinda and what a horrible bastard she is. Um, mm. Just repeatedly setting Dorothy up for a fall, laughing at everything going on. And yeah, and she doesn't gives her the shoes, which creates problems for Dorothy, and then says, "Oh, don't you know you could have used these all along?" And at that point, if I was Dorothy, I'd be like, "You want mate? <laughs> Sorry, but you... yeah, I've I've killed someone else, right? Which is right, what Glinda wanted, right? Yeah, I've killed someone else." For you. you, you've you've turned me into your fucking patsy. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, yeah, whatever. Horrible. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No. Alrighty. Okay, challenging one this week for any changes. We have to limit ourselves to just three. Do you have three, Carl? I assume you have three. Uh, I've actually only got two. You've only got two. Yeah. Are they quite broad? Yeah, they are quite broad. To be honest, one of them is. Um, can can we just make it not a musical? Can we maybe just can the songs? Yeah, I mean, I've got a similar one uh, in that it should be just less repetitive songs. I better songs make mm. the lion, the man, the scarecrow, the men, the tin man, and the scarecrow songs a bit more unique and progress the story rather than just repetitive shit. Um, I've also got make it shorter. Yeah, there's uh, no reason not to. Can, you, Who you, cares if it's only an hour long? You could say <laughs> sixteen minutes, fine. Yeah. Um. And then my third one. Oh, actually, you do. You do the second. Yeah, one. my other one is um, Garland is too old. Yeah, I mean they originally. Ha- oh, what's her name? They had someone else, similar child actor of that time. Oh, no, that's going to annoy know. me. Not sure. You would have heard of her as well. Okay. No, can't remember. Right, look at look, look at while, look at while I talk. So, um, like I said, when I watched this as a kid, I just thought she was another one of the adults. It didn't strike me at all that she was a she was a child. When I watched this now, um, it's obvious that she's not a full grown adult, but mm. she's also 
She's quite an old looking Much older year. than what she's supposed to be playing, this lost little girl. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of it kind of jarred. I was just like, uh, no. And then you set that again, because this is why we're here for this episode, right? You set that again against the almost universal praise and hype this film gets. And I just look at her and I go, she, she ain't all that. She doesn't work for me. So yeah, I, I think they they could have benefited from a, a genuine uh, younger or playing some uh, someone more convincingly playing a, a much younger girl, and it could have um, it could have lent into the sort of the child child adventure side of that a bit more uh, than this sort of rather more awkward, creepy offering that, <laughs> that we've got. Um, bugger if I can find what the name is, but I will find it whilst I um say about my other change which is um that leave it a bit more ambiguous as to whether she dreamed it or not don't set it up right from the get-go don't have the lady cycling outside the window that turns mm-hmm. into the witch like i'm sure people would get it but you don't have to spell out like if i get it other people are gonna get it <laughs> um right it's really bugging me that i can't find the name of that other child actress Sixteen, search for sixteen. Search for sixteen. Careful now. <laughs> what, what are you? Mm. I mean, it's all fun and games, lively and dead um, actors. But I mean, that yeah, that is funsies. Uh, fuck, do I can find it? Never mind. We'll come back to that. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> Shirley Temple, for fuck's sake. Okay, we move on to this is why you're wrong. Specifically you. Yeah, you. You, the one that likes it. All of you, you bastards. It's our closing statement from each of us. Um, I'm gonna, I think Carl's will be better, so I'm going to leave him mine oh, and then you can, oh. you, can, you can finish. So I think it comes down to this, right? It can be a great achievement in the history of cinema in terms of some of the things that they did, right? But if you didn't watch it as a young child, it's still just a bit shit. Right, what I'm about to say, I am sure I have been guilty of in the past. I'm sure I will be guilty of it again in the future. It's not paedophilia again, is it? No. Okay, cool. Just <laughs> but if we just all take a step back and calm down, the point I'm trying to make with my little statement here is that some films are better at this than others, right? Now, I'm talking about the fucking deeper meaning that is so prevalent among the more considered um reviews and examinations of this film which is the only thing i could find uh to su- to suggest why people like this mm. because everybody else just went oh it's a classic yeah but fucking why right so this is this is in a sense the only thing i've got to debunk right if you connect with something and you want to extrapolate out lots of deep meaning and allegories etc etc that's up to you in the case of this film if you're doing that it is you because this film is not putting enough on screen to justify that sort of depth. So I don't buy that as any sort of justification as to why this is one of the greatest made ever, as a lot of the hype suggests. And if you move away from that, what else is there? It's weird. It's, I mean, yeah, it's a bit dated, but... I will say, right, if people come to me and say, no, I love The Wizard of Oz because I watched it as a kid... And it just hooked me in and I just associate my whole childhood with The Wizard of Oz and it got me watching films. I loved it. It'd be like, fine. Have you rewatched it recently? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, because... That's all up to you, your person. But I, I, it cannot be that so many millions of people are watching this. And go, oh, yeah, 10 out of 10. To give it these ratings, it's crazy. For, for a minute, I thought you were saying millions of people were going to be listening to this podcast. Oh, God, no. God, no. no. Just, just no, 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 no. So do you reckon we've moved any needles there, Carl? I think with 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 this film, I think you you might have an easier job with it because it is so ob- it's so weird. A lot mm. of the stuff we've said is so like low hanging fruit. It's like, oh, yeah, it's obviously a bit shit and creepy and uh, so yeah, maybe we've maybe we've called a couple of uh, uh, or given people calls for a bit of a reexamination. Yeah. So my theory is that it's the you know, liking of this is indelibly linked to. When you watched it, if you watched it as a child, you're more likely to have liked it than if you did not watch it as a child and like it. it. Seems unlikely that there's a lot of people that have watched this first time as an adult and gone, 
five stars, classic. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, we've talked about Star Wars, right? Similar, similar kind of. Oh thing. yeah, but we, that's a much better film. Than yeah. This. Um, so I think it's even more the case for this one. Star Wars, I can I can see your point, very much associated with when you watched it. Uh, but yeah, even more the case for this one. All right, we move on to the data section to close things out. So, start off with some ratings. So, my rating, um, it's a one point five out of five for me, Carl. Yeah, I'm I'm going one because uh, I've realised, despite my insistence, everybody should use the scale. When I look at my spread of films, I'm actually quite reluctant to use the one. Mm. I, I feel I, I'm comfortable going out of two. I've, very occasionally, not things stand up. Mm, no, I'm going one. Fuck it, it's yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. I'm giving it a little bit extra just for its uh, production. Yeah, there's some good stuff on the production. I honestly can't think of much else nice to say mm. about it besides that. Indeed. Uh, so one for Carl. Sorry, I like to keep to keep a record of your scores that I've started to do now. There we go. Um, <laughs> this was uh, we've already talked about the critic scores and the Metacritic things and the IMDb scores. It's number 230 in the top one. Oh, no, it can't be 230 in the top 150, can it? 230 yeah. in the top 250 films on IMDb. So just, just squeezing in, which, again, actually is surprising because considering how much people ball about how yeah. great this is, I thought it would be higher, which is reassuring, at least. Mm. Um, Nominations-wise, in the 1940 Oscars, it, uh, Best Picture it was nominated for. Mm. Do you know what it lost out to? No. Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Uh, was this the first Oscars? No. Very much Because Gone with the Wind, wasn't that uh, nominated actually like three years after it came out or something? There's some weird... Uh, I don't know, but it's the same director as The Wizard of Oz. Trivia around that, yeah. Okay. Which is interesting. Uh, any other directors that you know have been nominated twice in the same year for different films? Well, these days they actively pull their films, don't they? They say, like, no, we're, we're throwing it's, everything it's, behind this one. So there's one relatively modern one, and that was Steven Soderbergh, Traffic, and Aaron Brockovich in the same year, nominated okay. for both. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Coppola for Godfather Part Two and The Conversation oh, yeah. as well. Very good. Because I was like, well, surely this hasn't happened very often. And, yeah, uh, yeah. There was a couple of other ones, but I hadn't heard of any of the films that, yeah. that were nominated because they were obviously, uh, I think it was like a third Academy Awards in this before. Uh, I started paying attention slash was... Uh, <laughs> and you still shouldn't waste your time. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was also nominated for Best Art Direction. Sure, yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah, why not? Uh, best Effects. Can, sure. I mean, I yeah. can't remember how... I can't imagine how many effects laden films there were at that stage, but hey yeah, sure. Uh Best Music Original Song for Somewhere of the Rainbow at One. You've taken that too far. Uh, and Best Music for Original Score. No. It won as well. Uh, so two Oscar wins, um, but yeah, no no acting ones. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, rewatchability, Carl. Oh fuck me, <laughs> very, very no. Yep, yep. Uh, I would uh, I would accept <laughs> we're talking about this. Like I would accept watching the eight two minute clips uh, if I had to. <clears throat> I'd rewatch sixteen minutes of mm -hmm. this film, just the highlights. Yeah, would just about get me through. But yeah, agreed. Very no. Um, best scene for you? Ooh. Yeah, outside outside of the uh, the Wicked Witch's gaff, the oh, we oh, we oh, uh, because uh, it reminds me of a uh, Metallica song called "Frayed Ends of Sanity." Uh, so yeah, enjoyed that when that came on. I was like <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at the scene in Once Upon a uh, the TV in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> Um, and uh, we've just been talking off air about the Stonecutters as Ooh. well. Uh, a a fantastic uh, yeah. reference to that, a great scene. So, yeah, that, because that was the only, genuinely, one of the only scenes where I actually smiled watching the film. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, well, I was, oh, go. yeah, so it's that, yeah. Well, similarly, one of the parts that I made me, made me uh, chuckle to myself was the getting off their tits on poppies and then being yeah, re energized yeah. by the mystery white powder that fell from the sky. Yeah. Hey, if we're looking for a hidden meaning, yeah. right there, kids. Yeah. Right there. Uh, best quote. Oh, God, this is slim pickings as well. Um, I've gone with, how can you talk if you haven't got a brain? I don't know. But some people without brains do an awful lot of talking, don't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
fine. Bit I've, on the I've nose got, I've got uh, for this podcast. I've, there I've, you got, go. I've got nothing. <laughs> like, there's that, I couldn't think of it. Like the only the quotes that stick in your head, right? That have uh, penetrated pop culture. Yeah. Well, like you said, the one that's been paraphrased incorrectly. Yes, the one that's been paraphrased incorrectly. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, like, oh, we're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah. Again, I think, not even sure she says, she says exactly that either. Um, yeah, it's like, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Like, I'm melting! But no, yes, isn't she just? Right. Yeah. Um, Favourite character? Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with the Wicked Witch of the West. She was the, the only one that really was committed to the bit and was remotely convincing so yeah I've gone for the lion's tail just his tail just have you seen how fat tail had a fucking mind of its own yeah. incredible I'm not sure how they did that hell of a piece standing yeah. to attention all that time you're damn it? right yeah. it had a proper personality I was yeah. watching the tail honestly yeah <laughs> more than the characters yeah. in, in the movie and of course he had that often. comfort thing as well um, of just going to hold it um, yeah very much like uh, a a small boy <laughs> will just hold his penis if he is distressed. Not just small boys, girl. <laughs> no, well, yes, quite. Yeah, quite. Um, so, yeah, they got they got that right. <laughs> Tearjerker, Carl. Did you cry? <laughs> no. no, no. I've gone with no rather than very no. Oh, really? Yeah, because you think um, you might have cried in fear when you were no. Like... Yeah, I can see how like you know, there's a whole separation. She thinks she's not going to get home. You know, if you're really fucking in there, yeah, sure. It's not, it's not, I'm not going to shut it down completely, not very no, but mm. no. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went very no. I, I, no. <laughs> Just, I, can't, I couldn't even, like, I struggled to get in the mindset that, the, where the, the only thing that could get people, I reckon, is the Somewhere Over the Rainbow song, right? But that, I think, would be completely separate to actually the movie experience, that they'd have some association of that song <laughs> to something Remember else that, that might Hawaiian make guy them released cry. It, and it was actually good, yeah. Ooh, that was nice. Huh? Um, Joker. Well, Hunk wishes so, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hunk, by the way, on the nose. Hunk. For, for, yeah, Hunk was the farmhand, the pervert number one. He's called Hunk. Yeah, he's called Hunk. Yeah, that was the farmhand's name. Yeah. Is he actually uh, called Hunk? Yeah, he's called Hunk the Scarecrow. Wow. Yeah. So right. he, he wishes so. Bond of yourself. No, it's, it's very, very no. Yeah, very, it's a, no. It's thank Christ. Very no. Yeah. Um, okay, so we had a couple of options for this one, Carl. Top threes. Yeah. And we originally went with our top three overrated movies in the top 100. But uh, at the last minute you said, no, it's boring. Yeah, because I looked at it and I thought, I've already talked about all of these on the podcast. Nobody needs to hear me say two Star Wars films and we're Flash again. (laughs) Are they the highest ones up that would have been overrated for you? They're the ones that I think are vastly overrated. Can I do mine anyway? If you want. Okay, so... I've basically done this on a data-driven approach, right? Yeah. So I've gone for anything that I didn't give 8, 9, or 10 mm-hmm. on IMDb. Yeah. Okay, so 7s and, and below. So the top one is 7 mm. at number 20. That was the one that I'd given a 7 out of 10 mm. to start with. 7 Samurai. I really don't like the number 7, apparently. Mm. Fucking anything with 7 in, no. Yeah. Uh, I say I didn't like it. Still gave it 7 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's at number 22. And then Spirited Away, which we've already talked about mm. on the pod, uh, 31. And then after that, it's just, uh, what's his name? Chaplin Films, Modern Times, City Lights, Great Dictator. Um, not great. Controversially, Pulp Fiction I saw only gave out 8 out of 10. Well, yeah, that's fine. It's, it's yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but on my scale, that's... Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, and biggest one that might angle the geeks... 2001 A Space Odyssey at number 96 only gave 7 out of 10. Yeah, but you think that's angling the geeks? I've never seen it. <laughs> Have you never seen it? No. You should watch it. Yeah, no, it's on It's on the sort of the long list of things I know I should get to at some point. Yeah. But yeah, never seen and, it. and just a quick call back to an earlier episode, Apocalypse Now would have been on this list. Ah, yeah, but we, we we've moved, moved, we've moved that we, needle, baby. We moved that needle. Yeah. But anyway, we did go for a top three child actor performances with no prep time. So, uh, Carl... Mm. Have you got a top three? Do you want I've to do any call yeah. outs uh, right. before well, you get I've to got the top three? Honourable mention because yeah, yeah. Um, the problem with doing this list, top three child performances, I think there's a bias towards uh, sort children. Of, yes, children. Very good. You're not getting a round of applause for that. That's nowhere near as good as your last joke. Mm, okay. um, there's a bias towards like uh, traumatic um, experiences. I think. 
Certainly there was when I did my list. Maybe that's just a reflection on me. Wait, traumatic as in... So you're drawn towards the... Dramatic. Yeah. No, no. So Traumatic. You are drawn towards, I think, uh, the characters that have experienced some trauma and therefore the child is having to display, you know, some form of being troubled or getting over some form of trauma. And then you go, oh, wow, what a great performance. Mm. I think it's easy to gloss over, for instance, it's my honourable mention, how good Macaulay Culkin is in Home Alone. On my list. Yeah. Because that's list. much more light-hearted. And this He's goes carrying for, that movie. Yeah, but this go, he is carrying that movie. And this goes for um, uh, your, your best actor gig in general, right? Nobody in a comedy ever gets even in the conversation. Mm. Now, I don't. I haven't got anything off the top of my head where I could point to and go, that's a great performance. Because I think it is just much easier to go when somebody's sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's a really good performance. Because it's a dramatic performance. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm calling out him as an honourable mention. Sadly, my top three does all fall into that child trauma. Bit. Okay, cool. Number three, mm-hmm. Natalie Portman. Leon. Yeah, for Leon. Mm-hmm. What's your number three? Uh, my number three is Abigail Breslin in uh, Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah, she she came up in a lot of the stuff I was looking mm-hmm. at. Yeah. Uh, I have seen it. Honestly, don't remember it well enough. Um, I love Little Miss Sunshine. To, uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. I've seen it a couple of times. To say that, yeah. Uh, my number two is Dakota Fanning. In... Uh, she, well, she, she appeared on this a couple of times, but I like her in Man on Fire. Oh, okay, yeah. With uh, Denzel. Denzel. Yeah, he would tell you that's what his dad's called, and he's called Denzel, but everybody calls him oh, Denzel. Really? Yeah. Oh, fuck him. Yeah. Don't tell him that. Fucking hell. Sorry. Yeah, he's still alive, so... Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, we love you, Denzel. Come on the show. Yeah. Uh, I do like Denzel Washington, actually. Nah, didn't he's, didn't he's for a long life. time, but really appreciate I've listened that. to some of the stuff he's been... Uh, some some clips and stuff of him talking about acting and, mm. and things like that, where he's very much just like, this isn't a hard job, guys. Like, yeah. you know... Send, yeah. you, send your kids to Iraq or, or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, he, he seems like a pretty grounded guy. Yeah. Yeah. Seems nice. I think he's still pretty quite intense, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, number two. Oh, have you done your number two? Number, number two. two. Dakota Fanning. Oh, yeah. Uh, number two for me, I'm going for Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. In Home Alone. Because he is literally carrying that film. Mm. Um, and a lot of these other ones, they're not the central performance in those. Before, uh, it's, it's a hell of an a- achievement that he did in Home Alone. Um, with that now like I think if you're getting down to the brass tacks of uh, acting and stuff he's obviously you know not a, a peak acting but but I think still yeah. as a child performance I'm giving it I don't know I think like I say I think you've fallen into that trap there that I've fallen into um, number think, one thinking that's the only way to be good is to be sad yeah. uh, number one is Milo Machado Grainer or Granair uh, you've seen him? I have. Um, and he is the young boy in Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, yeah, he was good. I thought he was fantastic. Now, Sandra Hula gets nominated, rightly, mm. for an Oscar for that film. She might have even won it for that film. He had a lot to do in that as well. Oh, oh no, actually, didn't fucking Emma Stone win it for Poor Things, for crying out loud. I still haven't um, seen that. I need to watch Poor he did have a, He did have a lot to do in that film. Mm. And I thought he was every bit as good. And he should have got a Best Actor nom for that. But I think they're just looking at it as a child. Mm. It's too easy to dismiss. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. Um, so yeah, there you go. Who's your number one? Everyone in Stand By Me. <laughs> they came up a lot on, on the list. Not seen it. Have you not so, seen Stand By no, Me? No, oh, it. mate, it's good. It is really good. Yeah. It's one of those I hadn't seen. Um, I didn't see it as like uh, a kid or, or anything like that. Saw it. Saw it as an adult, and it's it's probably powerful. I love it. Mm. Really good. It's cheating that though, isn't it? Who's the best? In uh, I mean, River Phoenix gets the. That's because <clears> he's dead. Dead. <laughs> hey, Bryce. Um, and I've completely forgotten the name of the other guy, but he's mainly in Corey the, more no, yes, more name for 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 the comedy side of things. But yeah, he was really good in it. Enjoy. Yeah. It. Corey Feldman's in it as well, isn't he? But no, I'm thinking of Corey Feldman. Yeah. I get confused between the Corys. But yeah, mm. Feldman, I was thinking of. Who's the best then? Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, fuck it, I'm going to go Corey Feldman. Why right. Uh, Corey Haim. Right. Is he better than your number two pick? No. Fuck off. Look, no. no. What about River Phoenix? Shut up. Is he no, better than your number two it. pick? No, stop it. I've chosen my three. You gave me like 10 minutes to prepare for this before. Are either of them better than no. 
Fuck off. No, I'm sticking my three. What do you mean you're sticking your three? That's it. You haven't given me three, you give me five. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to establish an order. I had two others on the list. In fact, in, I, ma- in, I made up my top three. Who this else is second. in stamp, uh, stamp? Is it Stand By Me? Yeah. There's, There's four of them, right? Yeah. Who, who's the fourth? I don't know. I can't remember his name. Can't remember his name. Oh, but it, yeah, it's really, really powerful, is it? Yeah. Well, well, I can't remember his name. Will Wheaton. Oh, it is Will Wheaton. I Will knew him Wheaton. as well because he's yeah. in uh, Big Bang Theory and he's in Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Will Wheaton. Where's he rank? Is, it, is he the best? Oh, no. He's number eight. He's number eight. Yeah. Oh, good, right. So he's out the conversation. Yeah, yeah. So Feldman, number one. Yeah. Haim, or who, who did you uh, say number two? He's, he's number six. Yeah. He's number six, right. So he's yeah. not in the top three. Phoenix, five. Phoenix, five. Right, okay. So we have got... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not everyone. I'm it's, definitely not making this up. It's, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, well, if you, you forced me to make a decision. Yes. You know, I did also call out Henry Thomas in E.T., yeah, he came up on lists as well. I yeah. do like I did like him, and I think he he he, he does do the. Uh, I mean, he gets a bit screamy at one point, but yeah, it's fine. And then uh, Chloe Grace Moretz in Kickass. Yeah, that was a hell of a. I assume it was a debut. I don't yeah, know. I went to the cinema to see that. Yeah, me too. It was good fun. It's all right. Yeah, I can't imagine you'd like it. No, maybe a little fucker. Anyway, Carl, you got anything else? Nope. Alrighty then, that's all that we've got. So if we move the needle for you, or even if we didn't, please do rate us, follow, subscribe wherever you are listening to us, and leave that five star review, please. It really does help us as we look to expand our audience to I just said audience. the stratosphere. I don't know. I didn't write anything down for this. I forgot I had to edit it. Um. Anyway. Our Twitter and Instagram is MTM Movie Pod. You can also find our page on Facebook. Details can be found in the show description. And our YouTube channel is at Movie the Needle. And we're also getting our TikTok on at movie.the.needle as soon as I actually do some bloody videos. So for me and Carl, it is goodbye. Goodbye. Is it still pissing down outside, Carl? No. Just windy. Oh. Huh. Well, you know, I'm off to trudge off home anyway. Uh, I guess we're not in the pube anymore, Carl. No place like home. There's no place like home.